now if you want to stick around and uh, talk about whatever you want to. I will answer all your burning questions the best of my abilities. Some I don't like want to answer, but I have to because I'm here. So let's do this thing. Let's get into it right now. If you got to take off, take off. You've been here for half an hour. I appreciate you guys immensely. Thank you. Vicky, thank you for reminding me. Always on top of things. Uh, this is not financial advice, legal or tax advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. Dan is not an expert. Sometimes he can't even talk correctly. These are Dan opinions. Please perform your own research. This is very true. <laughs> the Shallon, are you comfortable with all those geriatrics in Congress writing fair crypto regulations? No, because here's a secret. The pe people who are sitting in Congress right now, senators, congressmen and women, doesn't matter, uh, House of Representatives, they don't really write the bills themselves. Uh, that is their staff. And their staff is much younger than them. And really all they really care about is are they doing the right things for their constituents to get voted in again. That's all they care about. So it's not about, like, you're not going to see Maxine Waters sitting down with her feather pen and writing a law or a regulation for crypto. It's not, it doesn't work like that. It's going to be their people who they have in place and who they trust and say, okay, what do we need to do? What do the constituents say? How am I going to get reelected? That's it. That's the reason why we send people up to the hill you know, the blockchain committee and say, look, this is why we'd like to have some clarity because X, Y, and Z also is going to be good for your constituents because it's going to be job creation. It's going to help them uh, monetary wise, monetarily wise, excuse me. So if we can do stuff like that, that's it. That's all I really care about. That's it. <laughs> uh, TR, you Rob, follow me on Sweatcoin, draw me a wrench. That's, that's pretty aggressive, TR. Uh, I will get to that, but. Dan is not an expert. Oh, must be Jarky must be here. Everybody welcome Jarky. He's the one that's like uh, Santa Claus. Ah, Old Bear says, Rob, get on Instagram for all of us Twitter banned. Old Bear, you got banned? I think I have an Instagram account. I have a, I have someone who does that for me, but it's, um, I don't really like, I don't really like Instagram. Instagram is great for like images and, uh, influencers that are into the uh, beauty and uh, I guess personal advancement space, whether that is, uh, let's see, but yeah, Timmy, exactly, South Park. I have avoided Twitter since the beginning. Oh, you're going to love it. If you like toxicity, you'd love Twitter. Carrie says, I didn't get on this drawing, but I still, I still have one. Don't worry, we're going to do another one tomorrow. Steven, been here for a few years. All right, and I made it. I made it ex, ex, expressively clear, explicitly clear, to not ban anybody. I know some people were ticked off at the, uh, I guess the title, because I said that crypto was dying. And you, you know, in, in in crypto, you know, you you have to be staunch, one hundred percent bull market mentality all the time, or else people will turn against you. I don't care. I don't care because um, it's not a it's not a bull market. It's a bear market, and things are things are negative. Does that mean it's all gonna be negative forever? No. It's just that right now this is the reality. It is, and that's it. So um, that's all I can tell you. I mean, if if you want to go for hopium, there's a ton of stuff out there. There's a ton of people who will give you your dose of hopium, and guess. And a thousand X gains are coming around the corner and it's going to blow up tomorrow and this and that. There's tons of those guys out there. Go have fun with that. But you'll get burned out. You'll get burned out. I, I did the same thing in, in uh, 2018, 2017, 2018. I listened to those guys and gals. Listen to them tell me that Bitcoin's going to a million and that this was just a Chinese New Year issue in January 2018. And we would just turn around any moment now. There's tons of go out there. Find them. They're great. But you're going to get burnt out. And then reality sets in. And that's just how it is. Here's the reality. 2023 is going to suck. It's not going to be too great. We could have some, some uh, bear market rallies. But if you're thinking that, if, you, if your mentality is that it's going to go up to all-time highs, we're going to see some massive gains in 2023, I don't think that's what it is. I could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong. The reality for me is, is that 
in all honesty, it'd be much easier if I just didn't have this channel. <laughs> it would be because all I just do is the same thing I did in 2018, which was just dollar cost average, wait for things to get a blow off top, sell said blow off top, rinse and repeat. It's pretty much it. Ah, that's all. No, the decade doesn't suck. You take a, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it like this is awful and there's gonna be session and it's gonna be awful. Or you can just look at it like this, like I remember when Bitcoin went to three thousand. I thought it was gonna be the end of crypto. And now I look back and I go, damn it, that was the best opportunity I had. It's always two ways to look at it. Does anybody in this chat believe that crypto is going to die? Not that it's dying. I just told you it was dying for various reasons. One of those being just some clarity that we could use. Imagine, here's another question. If you, we got clarity in a week, Gary Gensler comes out and says, you know what? Here's the commodities. And it's only Bitcoin. Not, not Gary Gensler. Sorry, Gary Gensler, isn't, he doesn't make the laws. He just enforces the rules. Congress comes out. The Lummis, the Lummis Hildebrand bill comes out and they say, you know what? Here's what we define as a commodity. Here's what we define as a currency. Here's what we define as everything else, as a security. And we get that clarity. Okay, so now we have these crypto projects. They have to pay a fine because they had an unregistered ICO, an unregistered, unregistered security. Okay, EOS did that, still around. <laughs> Ask Beardy. And then they say, okay, well, now we did that. Now all the uh, crypto exchanges, they have to register as for selling securities. Robinhood does that, sells securities all day long. It's called stocks. So they get that done. So now we move forward and now all the scams and the junk that's out there, well, they get purged because they can't afford to register with the SEC because they don't have the funds to do so. Now, guess what happens? People get, these products get absorbed and they become stronger because they absorb the resources that each project has, which is time, money, and people, hopefully developers. And then they become stronger. Like, I don't see a problem here. Maybe I'm just missing it. I must be missing it because I've been saying this for like a freaking year and, and I could just, I still get arguments. I must be missing something. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Rob, cheer up. I got, I got, uh, I'm good today. I'm going to, we're going to go play a little beach tennis today. Looking forward to that. Probably have some mafungo or something because we're in Puerto Rico. And I got some friends from out of town. So it's going to be good times. I'm actually quite happy. It's just that I got a little, uh, You know, to be honest, people won't tell you this, but I'll tell you this. Sometimes it does take me off when, <laughs> when people say that's a, that's a this or a that or, or, or whatnot. And I think it's because I get, I get ticked off because I'm uh, a real person and uh, I have my thoughts on it and I think I'm right, but deep, deep down, I know that uh, I'm not always right because that would be ridiculous. Who the hell thinks that? So... Yeah, it's just me though. But I, you know what's great though? As I get older, I get uh, more calm. You should have seen me in my 20s. I was a raging a-hole. I know it's hard to, hard to believe. I should tell you a story about uh, one time in Juarez, Mexico, where I almost got, I almost got beat down by an entire water park. Uh, Bajarki. What's up, Rob? Are you worried about the supercomputers that are coming re regarding to your passwords? Are we talking about quantum computers? I am worried about them, but I think the bigger thing is that people say, well, if quantum computers come in, then, then all crypto goes away because they can just hack all your mnemonic phrases. Look, if quantum computers come in and uh, they are readily available, which I don't think they will be for quite some time, it's not crypto we got to worry about. Imagine all your simple passwords that you use for your bank all your financial access, all the different things you have for your personal information, guess what? If the quantum computers are there, it's not crypto you got to worry about. It's all that stuff you got to worry about. So I think uh, I think there's bigger fish to fry when the quantum computers come out as far as like crypto and things like that. And that's it. When, when I get to PR, can I look you up in Chicago? Ain't so bad. Man, Chicago's good. I like the pizza. 
Uh, yeah, we'll always do we'll have meetups every couple of weeks. So for sure. Mm, suck my plums it says crypto is a new tech. People forget that and just think about value of tokens and coins in the market. It is the future. Exactly. Very true. <laughs> George would be a great football coach. Guy really gets you pumped to go buy crypto. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Nah, it's not a FUD nor hopium. Rob is realistic. I try to be. But again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at the whole thing the right the wrong way. Maybe, maybe next year is maybe the bull run does start in January and we just go up exponentially. Could be. Yeah. I'm not saying so here's the difference. Like when people read these things, like people and I and I changed the the title to make this more clear, I said, goodbye, Nexo. And the reason parts of crypto is dying slowly. And it's true. Parts of crypto are dying slowly. Is Nexo, is, are they expanding? No. They're getting pulled back. Is the confidence level by the average retail investor expanding into crypto? No. Because FTX, Voyager, Celsius, and BlockFi collapsed. Are we moving in the right direction for some clarity? Probably not. Well, maybe we are on that one. I, I could be wrong on that one. So I still see like we aren't firing in all cylinders. This isn't this isn't a market that is just, you know, exponentially growing and mass adoption is is just pushing to to greater highs and, and that's it. I mean, we are at the ha even if I don't even know if we're at all time high for hash rates anymore. I know the uh the difficulty uh, adjusted because a lot of Bitcoin miners shut off their rigs. <laughs> DCCs, come on, Rob. Sure, Fed will have to reduce rates in 2023, and markets will be on a rebound. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it will. It's just that remember we talked about this yesterday. Once the Fed pivots, uh, it takes a little bit of time for things to bounce back. Because when the Fed pivots, it's because really they broke something, and then we got to deal with that for a while. But again, for me. That's good news because I don't want to buy Bitcoin at 30,000. I'd rather buy it around 15. That'd be great. Mm, yeah, there will always be a country that want to adopt crypto. That's true. It leaves a vacuum. Crypto is going through a cleansing. Nice shirt. Thank you. Just bought it a couple of days ago. Hmm. MCAT video lectures. What are your thoughts about younger people with less capital to invest, taking on riskier, less diversified portfolios? I, I can only tell you how I would play it. 20-year-old Rob is going to take a lot more risks than almost 50-year-old Rob. So because I got time. So that's just me. And, uh, you know, it could work out pretty well. And another thing is during the next bull run, it doesn't matter what you invest into, you're pretty much going to hit a home run because that's pretty much how it goes. Show me the, the people who can who do well as far as the traders in this nasty bear market. And not just one trade or two trades or 10 trades, like where they're net positive for a long time. <laughs> Has pickleball taken off in Puerto Rico yet? Um, kinda. The tennis courts, the tennis clubs now they have uh, they've built uh, pickleball courts. Uh, yeah, Rob, did you see a Ledger launch a new cold wallet at the touchscreen? Yeah, we just covered it. Matter of fact, links in the description. You can use it. <laughs> I think you're always right, Rob. Man, let me tell you, don't trust anybody, not even me. And of course, I am never always right. I'm just shooting for 50%. That'd be great. They don't tell people about money. Yeah. Wow. My bank has recently blocked all crypto trading. What bank is that? That sounds awful. And where are you from? That's the bigger question. And yeah, Shannon's got a good point. Cardano is already working on quantum protection. That's pretty important, I think, as time goes on. And also, yeah, also Algorand. That's true. <laughs> Shaolin says, one time in China, I ran from the police after they raided the bar looking for illegal cigarettes. Good times. Those are good times. Uh, 
So Rob says, even with the fastest quantum computer, how would they be able to bypass 2FA? If they can just work their their quantum magic and just figure out your mnemonic phrases, doesn't matter. Yeah. Trading stocks says, I'm not sticking up for SEC, but if you look back on Gary's teaching when he was at MIT and one or two of his teachings, he said most or maybe all crypto was doing with security. Look it up. This was the point I was I was trying to make, but I, I, I couldn't think about it at the point at the time. Who's really to blame here? Is it Gary Gensler? Because he doesn't have really guidance. You know, he just says, I think it is. Or is it the people in Congress who are dragging their feet and definitive law isn't there? However, that's not true because, in all honesty, the law that Gary has to work with is the Howey test. And if he's basing things on the Howey test, he can make a distinction between what is a security, not a security. So I guess that's not true. So until we get an updated version, I guess it does really fall on Gary. That. <laughs> Parts of me are dying slowly. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had found you in the bull run and George in the bear market, but it panned the other way out and now holding the bag all the way down. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to start every video with saying this. I know the market isn't great now. Just stick with me. Good things happen when we just hang around. That's pretty much the story. And that's it. Vicky says crypto is evolving like everything that evolves. Parts have to die off and new parts. Yeah, makes sense to me. Very, very well said, Vicky. Uh-oh. Nixo is highly suspect, liquidated me 274,000. Blamed on the Oracle, but never paid me for the error. Oof. And that's a, that is a, uh, a tax occurrence. It's a taxable event. Not great. Norman says, what if the four-year cycle breaks? Wouldn't it freak a lot of people down? Yeah, it would. But to me, like, I think the four-year cycles, well, they're still intact so far. They are. Um, but the blow off top, because in 2024, regardless is going to be a halving for Bitcoin. That's planned. Could be March, could be April. The next question is, will the next all time high occur in 2025? To me, I think it will, but it, I could be wrong. And that's why I look at a bunch of different factors and I'm not going to play it to chance. That's why let me show you. There's some, there's some data points that I will be looking at. Let me, everybody knows this website, it's free. <clears throat> Dan teaches crypto. Under investing, I'm just looking at this stuff right here. And all these, I mean, most of these charts are, are free, except for the time and risk factor, which is at Ben's site into the cryptoverse. That's super important. But uh, Pi Cycle Tops, NUPL, Time and Risk, MRVZ score, T or MA, Pull Multiple, Reserve Risks. I'm looking at these things for when they get into these red areas. Because, right, and I explained this quite extensively in this 30 minute video here. I'm not going to go over it here, but it's very simple. When things are in like the greenish area for these different uh, charts, graphs, d data points, you want to think about accumulating. Once it gets into the red blow off top area, you want to think about, not do, but think about selling some. I ladder in, I ladder out, DCA in, DCA out, however you want to say it. And then once we get here, so I don't care if this happens in 2025, six or seven, at some point we're going to get into these banned areas at some point and I will sell at those points. And then at some point, years, months, weeks, days, hours, I don't know, later, it's going to go in these, these other areas and I will start to reaccumulate. It's just, that's it. I, the time frame isn't important. What's important is the data that you take a look at it. That's what it is. If it lines up at 2025, sweet, awesome, great. But I don't know if it actually will. So that's it. That's a good one. That's it. Invest in cryptos that have survived multiple bear and bull cycles. Hey, you know what? For giggles, here's one here. Let's take a look. You know, you can go to... See if I can find it. 
And market cap? Ah. Cap.com forward slash historical. And you can take a look at all the snapshots from way back in the way back when of what was, you know, ranked one, two, three, four. Look at this one. 2000, let's see, 2013 when we had all time highs. I don't know, November. Try this one. This wasn't it. But look at this one Bitcoin, Litecoin, XRP. 2013. And then the rest of them, I don't know any of these. Pure coin, name coin, Nova coin, prime coin, mega coin. I thought it said mega colon. Quark, quark, tickets, lucky coin, bit bar. Yeah. So I'm just saying. So then let's fast forward to, let's go to 2016. After the halving, let's trade. Let's just go to November 6th. What was, again, Bitcoin, well, Ethereum gets in there. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, ETH Classic, Monero, Dash, ha. Augur, Steam, <laughs> Waves, Nem, Dogecoin, number 13. Pay attention to Dogecoin. As much as people make fun of it, it's been like the top 20 forever. Factum, Guidance, Stellar, Bitch, I don't know these, I don't know any of these things. Neo, I remember that one. Stair says Pure Coin, like all this stuff, gone, gone, all of it's gone. Let's fast forward. Let's go to 2017. Let's go to December 17th, roughly. Here's what the top were. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash. Wow. XRP, Litecoin, Cardano. It's been there for quite a while. IOTA, Dash was still there. Amazing. NEM, Monero, Bitcoin Gold. Ha. Huh. EOS, Birdie. Tron still up there. BitConnect. Ah, uh, BitConnect. Lisk, Zcash, Waves, Tether. Bitchers, and a bunch of stuff. I have no idea what the heck this stuff is. Did you buy it? I remember that. Factum, made safe coin, gas, sis coin, like all this stuff is gone. So yeah, so it's a good point Dr. Payne makes. Take a look at things that have been around. Again, go to coinmarketcap.com forward slash historical. And you can just kind of see the ones that have been around. Those look pretty good to me. Uh, Bootsy. My average price for Bitcoin is 33.3. How long do you speculate to break even? Here's the great thing, Bootsy. Uh, what I've been doing is uh, I keep buying Bitcoin and every day that I buy, below my basis price it lowers my basis price so if you were to buy let's say that you bought bitcoin at thirty thousand and thirty five thousand and then your now your price is thirty three thousand if you bought today at seventeen thousand and you bought a good chunk of it whatever it was your cost basis would be i mean go exponentially lower so then you're you could sell it faster that's not investment advice it's just a fact that you could do those things moving forward. I'm telling you to do that, but thank you. Okay. Rob was on point about Voyager. Yeah. Two weeks before. And don't just take my word for it. There's a, there's a, I've been, let's be honest, folks. I've been wrong many a time, but I did get one thing right. Selsk's Voyager timeline on June 12th. Talked about taking crypto off of Celsius. Something was going on. Then pff, 10 hours later, they withdrew. The, they froze the withdrawals. I'm sorry about that one. I should have been, I should have been, I should have put that video out a day before that, but I was driving back from Austin. It was my fault. And then with Voyager, we found out that uh, they did an uh, uncollateralized loan to Three Arrows Capital for 640 million, I think it was. So I said, I'm going to stop using them or I'm going to take all my crypto off. And two weeks later, they froze it. And then that's why I don't really talk too much about exchanges anymore because they've come on my show and lied right to my face. So that's a link I put in all the descriptions of every videos. Meme, it's okay. You didn't miss much. I'll, I'll catch you up to speed. Uh, Nexo is leaving the United States. I think we need clarity as far as regulation. Uh, we've also had, um, who was it? Goldman Sachs came in and said they're going to start to buy crypto. And uh, there might be... Uh, a Twitter coin coming out. <laughs> Rob is always right until he isn't. No, I'm, I'm wrong many a times. Don't trust me. Don't trust anybody. Amy says, we be on the next DCA Live? No, I have stepped down from DCA, uh, the show. It was time. And uh, I mean, James has got a, 
he had uh, CTO Larson, a great guy, you know, and then um, banter. So like, that's a good show, you know, and uh, I think there'll be differences of opinions. And this just was just was time for me. Also, there was some there was a lot of uh, negativity going around. And uh, it's just sometimes it's just best just to step step back and go from there. All, nothing but I watched the show. I gave a little shout. I said, hey, this looks like a good camp, good panel. That's it. So that's it. So I won't be on there uh, for any time, anytime soon. Dr. Payne says he was a YubiKey. You know who likes YubiKeys is um, uh, Hashoshi. I need to get him back on the show. The kid's always so busy. Uh, let's see. So, Rob, you follow equities and metals. Equities, I, I dabble in the stock market. I do a poor job. I'm not a big trader. I just kind of buy and hold away for some next big blow off top. But uranium, I saw a video by CTO Larson about the ex exponential upside of uranium. And it looks interesting. But the thing is, here's what it is. I can't invest into something I don't know. And I don't know anything about metals. I know gold's important. I own, I own some gold and silver. Shocker. But uh, I just won't invest in the things I just don't know about. And that's one of them. I have to do a lot more research to figure that out. <laughs> Ah oh, man. Uh, good point. I get your stuff of Nexo. Yeah, I'm not going to be on there for a while. Are all the old DCAs wiped clean from your bench channel? No, I still have. There was only one video I have deleted in a very long time. And it was the one where I talked about getting a loan through Celsius. And uh, yeah, I just deleted that one. I'm like, I don't want, because it was there was a point when you could actually do things with Celsius, even though they were in flux. And I was like, I don't want anybody to know how to do anything with Celsius. I think it is a horrible company and I don't want to talk about that. I still left the videos up where Alex and me were talking and he told me to my face that, you know, they over collateralize and everything is fine. Da, da, da. I didn't delete those. That's the only video I can think of. Honestly, that's the only thing, that's the only one that I've deleted that I can think of. Maybe sometime I, I deleted something. Don't, uh, I'm like, Rob, but you deleted this one video two years ago. Ah, okay. Yeah. James from Invest got really emotional. You see, hey, I missed you guy there. Crypto crowd I'm really toxic these days. Look, we're all trying our best just to put out the, the best information, but I get it. I mean, people are pissed off. They're, they're, they're ticked off because they're like, look, you know, these guys told me that crypto is going to be awesome and it's not awesome because the price isn't going up. I didn't tell you, was gonna, I didn't tell you the price is going to go up anytime soon. And that's why like, like I think people don't like this show too much because I'm not as exuberant about the short term, I guess. And I kind of just live in, the reality and that's it so it's tough and people are ticked off and i get it but to me it's just investing and business has always been the same thing for me or even staying in shape it's just you just show up you grind it out even though you may not want to and you just stick around and that's it and good things happen when you stick around uh, in the in the military, we have a saying: just show up with the right uniform, and you, you'll get promoted. The same thing with investing: just keep showing up every day, just do your do the as much research as you possibly can, and decide what's best for you, and just stick around. Good things happen. People will say that's the secret. There is no secret. Ah, that's a good one, Rob. Do you hand out wrenches on Christmas, Christmas Day? I will. That's a great point. I should do that. Yes, I will pan out a bunch of wrenches. Rob, will I ever make it? Sure. Just keep at it. It's like Thomas Edison. He said, I, I, made, a, I made a thousand failures so I can just make one light bulb. That's it. Uh, crypto Essentials, I get this. Ah, that's a good question. 
Rob, obviously leverage is no good in the cryptoverse. Do you borrow much money in your real estate endeavors? No, I don't. Um, there's two ways of thinking about real estate. So for us, it's we outright own and buy real estate properties because there's a mentality out there that is that you can, and I never agree with this, is that you could um, sublease. So you could go to an owner of, of a home who is doing long-term rentals and say, hey, I would like to rent out your house, uh, but to do it, I'll sign the year contract, but I want to use this for Airbnb. And I'll even pay a little bit more for it. Okay, you guys do that. And it works out pretty well until there's an economic downturn and people stop coming <laughs> to your places, which is what happened during the coronavirus and people lost their, lost their shirt. So for us, we don't leverage too much at all. We don't leverage, period. We just... We get the funds to pay for the real estate, and then we do short-term rentals. If we get into a, a sticky situation where there's not, like if another pandemic comes around, then we just do long-term rentals. But so far, everything's pretty good. And another thing is that for real estate, only invest in the real estate of where you live at, right? Like we live in El Paso, Houston, and Puerto Rico. Those are the only places we have uh, real estate because it's just too hard to do things. You can do it, but it's just not us. All right. Uh, ooh, Switzerland and Portugal. Interesting. When Jim Cramer says get out, doesn't that mean get in? <laughs> There's an inversion of Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer just said that uh, everybody should sell all their crypto and get out. And uh, that was it. Let's see how it works. He might be right. I don't know. I mean, he might be right for the short term. Like, here's an example. Here's an example when Jim would actually be right because everybody gives him so much guff. Let's say that the contagion really expands. Contagion expands past FTX and Alameda, past BlockFi. Maybe Gemini goes down. Maybe Crypto.com goes down. Maybe Binance goes down. Hell, I don't know. And then before you know it, you see the Bitcoin price that you sold at 17000 is now 13000 or $12,000. Would Jim Cramer be right? Well, he'd be right to get out, but it's up to you to decide for yourself, like, hmm, should I get back in? Because maybe Bitcoin will go back up at some point in my lifetime. So if you sell it at 17, it goes on at 12, you can buy it and then go that way. That is for people who like to trade and like anxiety. I don't like that. So I just uh, buy and hold and go, wow, today's a good day because it's a little bit lower. Or wow, today's a good day. It's a little bit higher. It's, it's very simple. Yeah, I just take the time. That's it. Ah, let's see. Uh, let's see. Orlando says, Rob, I know you mentioned you won't be doing DCA. If Ben will still be there, is James the only one continuing the show with Rand? Well, that was James's idea, the DCA show. It was first, it was me, George from Cryptos R Us, and James. And then George got burnt out because he does like 10 channels. The guy's a amazingly active and uh so then we picked up ben and then uh i stepped me and ben stepped away uh ben's got his fourth kid coming in like two or three weeks and uh, a lot of things are going on so and that was it so i think he's out for for whatever and so it'll probably it'll probably be ben i mean it'll probably be uh james and whoever he picks up could be cto for permanent or it could be ran and C I don't know but I talked to James yesterday. Actually, I just texted him this morning. See how he's doing. Said he's doing better. So that's it. <laughs> pull, pull, pull. The window with liquor is talking about the pull multiple. And if you're taking a look at that, well, let's take a look at that, matter of fact. Where are we? Into, no, that's not right. Look into Bitcoin. Here's what, we're, what Wendell Licker is talking about. Great website, look into Bitcoin. 100% free charts, a lot of great data. A lot of things I take a look at. Um, we're looking at the Puel multiple. And again, it's... Okay. This is just, this is a great metric for the supply side of Bitcoin between Bitcoin miners and their revenue. Uh, let's see. 
That's right. It's calculated by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoins by the 365 day moving average. All that really says is, is you know, are Bitcoin miners selling a lot? And uh, if they are, then you take a look at that and go, this might be a good time to accumulate, which again, I like colors. So I'm not that smart. So like right here, it just tells you like, this might be a good idea to accumulate around here, around 20,000, 17, 16. Okay, not too bad, right? So like up here, you can see that once it gets in the red, red the red column, you're like, hmm, maybe around 10,000 be a good, pretty good time to sell. Maybe I ladder out as I go up, 18,000, sure. And that, that was in 2017, of course. Bap. And then of course over here, this wouldn't have been a bad time. Just about. Remember when it was at 59,000? I would have sold right around here too. So again, it's just something to take a look at. It's a pretty good indicator. It's pretty accurate. I mean, reasonably accurate to see when to maybe uh, potentially accumulate and when to maybe potentially uh, sell off. Snapshots. <laughs> Tomato coin, not yet. Josh says, I hope you stick up, Ben stick up for James. I had no problem with James. Like I said, I just talked to him this morning. I just told him. I got two, I had a lot of things going on. Time to step away. It's time. It's time to, that's the thing. And you, like, if you've ever built, built businesses and things like that, there's only so much time you can, you're into it and you get it into it and you really like it. And there's a time you're like, this is, feels good. Don't want to do everything forever, right? Just like this channel. This channel will at some point go away. I won't be here. I'll still be in crypto, but this channel will go away at some point. I can guarantee that. But uh, maybe we got one more bull run left in us, huh? <laughs> yeah, I remember that too, Mr. Wolf. I invited Mashinsky lies right to my face, right to James's face. <laughs> Rob came over and snuck him out and made me hit the buy button. That's true. Thank you, Hawk. I try to be level-headed as much as possible. Opium free. See, I love this part here. Like when we're doing, it's very hard for people to call me out and say, ah, that was clickbait and that was awful and you're wrong in, during the live stream. I welcome it. I do. A discussion is a discussion. But uh, trust me, I'll get blasted in the comment section. Yeah, after that, we stop the live stream. But in all honesty, I mean, if, if I think about it logically, I think everybody needs a place to vent, right? Right. Because it's not like you can, it's not like you can shout out your significant other for you investing in the crypto and it going down or something happening or you leaving it too long in exchange. It's, it's really up to you. So you got you to gotta vent someplace. So why not me? Hmm. And why not? It's like uh, Marcus Aurelius would always talk about. It's better these things happen to me than anybody else, as I can sustain. Uh, yeah, slippery slope, leverage, got to be true. <laughs> what happened? Yes. The people will feel bad. Just remember your parents made you win the race of your lifetime. Just like you can make it like everybody else because you are the one. That's true. William, William, William O'Leary says, keep in mind when you take profits, you're just dumping on somebody else. Could be. However, to me, I think it goes like this. So let's say for Bitcoin, for example, a lot of some people in third world countries, their fiat system is inflated away. And the only thing they can really use is crypto, whether that be a stable coin or Bitcoin. So if they have to buy Bitcoin and say, let's say that I sell it at, I don't know, 100,000, 100K. And then they come in and say, I need to buy Bitcoin at 100K. They're not gonna buy 100,000 in a third world country that's inflated away, but they're gonna say, I need 100 Satoshi so I can pay for this meal, whatever it is. So they do that, they pay the exchange, they take that, whatever it is, they pay for it, whether it goes up and down, that's it. So in all honesty, 
you could say that you're dumping on somebody, but if people are using it for a real world utility, and the bigger question is, is who is using it and how many people are using it for real, real world utility as opposed to people who are just speculating. And I would argue that if you were just speculating, then you know those risks when you are buying and selling. That's what I would say. Yes. Uh, <laughs> professional scammer. Nah, I don't think so. I think everybody's just, I think most people are good with bad intentions, with some small bad intentions. Yeah. CTO Larson trying with the Larson line does seem to be a good indicator. Very true. Yeah, man. Going an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, I like CTO too. What the Puel is going on? Very good. I'd say Puel on, Puel on words. Hmm. <laughs> I think we're good. Let's see. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anybody's question? I probably did. And then I'll leave it like this to, to follow up. Every buyer needs a, needs a seller. And that's true. Supply and demand, sell and, sell and buy. That's it. All right. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And that's it. So uh, I appreciate you just for stopping by and hanging out with me for um, over an hour. Uh, that's it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, again, tomorrow, another, another $250 uh, giveaway in ETH. So make sure to follow me on Twitter. And I'll do those and again on Saturday, 2500 $2, bucks. It's crazy. Okay, got to go. Bye.